Life Audio. Hello and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And you can find us on Facebook. Look for Daily Bible Podcast under Community Groups. And you can hang out with us. You can share what you got out of the passages. You can share your prayer requests. Um, It's so fun to connect with you there. It is very fun. It's very fun. Okay, so today we've got another long list of verses Mm -hmm. and chapters that we are reading. So get started or buckle your seatbelt because we're about ready to get started. So 2 Samuel 2 and then we moved on to 2 Samuel 3 verses 1 through 5. We moved over to 1 Chronicles 11, verses 10 through 19, then back to 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 8 through 17, then 1 Chronicles 11, 10 through 19, back to 2 Samuel 23, 18 through 39, and then finally we finished the day with 1 Chronicles 11, 20 through 47. Whew. Whew. That was a lot. There was a lot, but it was good. It was good. <laughs> and it all it made good. sense. I was like, oh, this is how it all ran together. This is so cool. So I feel like I've been on this campaign for a while and the days mm-hmm. have been getting darker and darker. But today I felt like we turned this new leaf and there was some excitement in the air. And uh, the the language of David and God, or I should say the conversation seemed to be coming back. There seemed to be this tight relationship. God is, David is asking God where he needed to settle and God is telling him Hebron. So David took his family and his men and their families, and he settled in Judah near the village of Hebron. And there the men of Judah anoint David as king. Finally, Finally, we see this promise that God had made, and we see what Samuel had anointed David as a young man. We see this coming true. So David is anointed as king, but but there's this little caveat here. He's just king over one tribe. Even though it's the largest tribe, it's still just one tribe tribe. And while David is being anointed as king and he's settling his family, the commander of Saul's army, Abner, he proclaims that Saul's son, Ishbosheth. That's a hard name. So say it with me. Ishbosheth. Ishbosheth. Okay, Ishbosheth. Ishbosheth. He pronounces that Saul's son is king over the other tribes. I was like, what? How can you do that? Well, one commentary that I read said that the people of Israel didn't want the Philistines to be mad. Mm. And so they, by making David king, so they did something a little bit easier and sneakier and said, oh, Saul's son is going to um, be our king. But then um, other commentary said, well, this was just Abner going, uh, I want to be the puppet man. Yeah. And um, I'm stronger than, um, can we just call him Ishi? Um, King Ish. You can call him Ish, 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 okay. or Ishi, or whatever. Okay, I'll call him call King him. Ish. That sounds a little bit, that sounds a little bit more respectful. <laughs> I'll call him King Ish. So, so we also see here that David, he doesn't force himself to reign on these other people. Like he wants them to come to him and be like, you are our king. And it almost made me think of another king we know, one who stands at the door and knocks. He's a gentleman. Mm, Who could that be? Maybe Jesus (laughs) doesn't force himself in. I know. I know. Waits for us to invite him in. Okay. Of course, of course, going on back to, um, back to David and Ish here. Of course, there's going to be a war between Ish's people and David's people. 
that Abner, he is a mastermind behind everything that Ish does. So Ish has Abner as commander in his army. And of course, David has one of his mighty men, Joab. And Joab is the son of David's sister. And Joab was one of those 400 men that joined him in the cave of Adullam. And Ab- so first off, Abner and Joab have this little scrimmage and they each choose 12 men from each side and they fight one another. And of course, you know, those 24 men are dead. Then they have a little bit of larger of a war or battle breakout and David's army came out the victors and they only lost a few while, um, while Abner's army lost a lot more, but Joab's brother, a uh, nephew of David. He was a casualty in that war. And what we're seeing here is the beginning of a long war between mm-hmm. those who were loyal to Saul and those who are loyal to David. And as time passes, David's army becomes stronger and stronger and Saul's dynasty becomes weaker and weaker. And it's also during this time that we is when David's sons are born. We have seven, he has seven sons who were born during, or six sons, six sons. Sorry, I lost track. He has, he has a a lot of sons and probably in short, in short order, because there's probably like more than one woman pregnant at the same time. Uh, Yeah, he had to have. Well, we know he did because in the listing, it lists who the sons were and their mothers. And so Mm -hmm. one of the things that we see in this section is the many wives and concubines that David had. And here's one thing we know. These women caused David heartburn and maybe even heartache. (laughs) This was a sin of his. Having multiple wives was something that was common in these days. I mean, polygamy, like lots of men had multiple wives. It made them look stronger and richer and better. But David was king. And there was something that God said about this in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 17, 15 says, he's talking about, you will be appointing a king over you whom the Lord your God chooses. And then he goes on, he lists out what that king will will be. It will be one from your countrymen. It will not be a foreigner. He cannot acquire many horses for himself. Then in verse 17, he says, we find these words, and he shall not acquire many wives for himself. So that his heart does not turn away, nor shall he greatly increase silver and gold for himself. Then if we also look in Genesis 2 at the very beginning where God is sort of painting, you know, just what life is supposed to look like. God, God says that therefore shall a man leave his mother and his father, actually father comes first, his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. We know David is a man after God's own heart. We've already started seeing that. We know he continues to be a man after God's own heart. But this is a pretty big sin in his life. And it was there for all to see. It wasn't just between him and God. It was there for all to see. And But we also know this is a man that when God convicted him, he repented and he grieved. He knew mm-hmm. what he had done. And so we don't see that just yet. That's a little bit of a spoiler. But you know that if you've studied David, mm-hmm. that that's what's yeah. coming. So, and then we finish off today just reading about David's mighty men. And oh my goodness, I had so much fun <laughs> reading this passage. They were mighty, mighty men. They, they were, were mighty men. Like the yeah. first of the three, Jashabin, he once used his spear to kill 800 enemy warriors in a single single battle. And then we had Eleazar and he and David stood together against the Philistines when the entire Israelite army fled. I mean, come on. I mean, these are some mighty men. And then it went on to talk about the 30 mighty men and like Abishai, the brother of Joab, who used his spear to kill 300 enemy warriors in a single battle and Benaiah who chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. It just sounded like Sam- something Samson would do. These mighty men were mighty for David and mighty for God. They loved their leader. And that's what we saw. They loved their leader and they would fight to death for him and they were united. And it was just it was fun to read that passage. I just like, how can someone kill 
800 warriors in a single battle with a spear. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. that is, I, I, I mean, 800? That's a lot of men. That, that, like, that strength has to be God given because that doesn't even seem possible to kill that many people. But it had to have been. I mean, it's written. It happened. It happened. Like, so it was God's power was on them to obviously Uh be that mighty. Yeah. Anyway, I, I just was eaten, eaten today up because I was like, this is just so much fun. It's like, it's like the, the wrestlers like you could almost picture like trading cards for all of these mm-hmm. guys or action mm-hmm. figures i don't know yeah they were pretty they were pretty mighty we should come out with david's mighty men action figures oh, there you go be cool available only on the daily bible podcast there you go even better <laughs> we'll have to talk about that but we'll do that over the break we need yeah. to hear from our sponsor and then we'll come back with the word of the day stay tuned This episode is brought to you by He Gets Us, a nationwide campaign all about raising the respect and relevance of Jesus. Did you see the Super Bowl ads about Jesus? Are you wondering how you can get involved? He Gets Us is a multi-year effort to raise the respect and relevance of Jesus in the United States. Thanks to this unprecedented campaign, millions of Americans are discovering the life-changing impact of Jesus. And we want you to be a part of the movement. Join more than 45,000 He Gets Us fans getting the latest updates, inspiration, prayer ideas, and easy-to-share resources via text message by subscribing to our fans' community. To do so, text FANS to 70193. By being a fan, you can get exclusive updates on new ads, events, and other exciting news related to the He Gets Us movement. We'll also keep you inspired by giving you access to reading plans, prayer guides, and other tools to help on your spiritual journey. Join this community of like-minded individuals who share your passion for spreading the love of Jesus. Simply text FANS to 70193 to join today. This summer will be the most fun and safest with swim lessons from British Swim School. Offering swim lessons to babies and kids across the U.S., British Swim School gives you the confidence to let your little ones enjoy pools and lakes safely. British Swim School has highly trained instructors who specialize in fun and gentle teaching in a small class environment. Sign up for classes now at BritishSwimSchool.com. That's BritishSwimSchool.com. British Swim School. Make a splash. Okay, so the word of the day is brotherhood. And brotherhood, you know, you think of like Philadelphia, the the city of Philadelphia, brotherly love or something. Yeah. Brotherhood means it's a it's a defined anyway is the whole body of persons engaged in a business or profession. Or it could be an association, a society. We hear a lot of societies, you know, the brotherhood mm-hmm. of this, of that. It can mean a community of people linked by a common interest, religion, or trade. And there is just something about David that made people want to be mm-hmm. around him. I mean, think of Jonathan. And and then and then think about these mighty men who joined him, who followed him into a cave because they wanted, I, I'm sure that they were like, oh, David is in distress. We need to go help him and we need to lift him up. But there was also this unified care for him and this unified fight for him. And you can't help but wonder if they happen to have seen him with Goliath and they wanted to either be like him or learn from him or say, David is so cool. We want to, we want to be near him. But I also can't help but think that this brotherhood had something to do with God, had something to Mm -hmm. do with David's faith in God and someone going, I want to be like that. I want to learn from, at least that's who I am. I, I, yeah. when I see somebody who has an extreme faith in God, I'm like, I want to be near you. I want to, I want to sit at your feet and I want to learn who you are. And I almost wonder if some of that was a little bit of that link. I'm not sure, but I just, I just see that David had this fervor and this zeal and this all outness for God. And I can't help but wonder if these brothers, if this band of brothers kind of had that same feeling of, I want to learn from David, not only for his mighty warrior skills, but also for his heart of God. 
I, anyway, that's just totally me speculating, but that is something I, I've been speculating. I think so. About. I mean, I think it makes sense because, uh, like, there's that two side. There's that warrior, but with that tenderness, poet. Mm-hmm. Um, he was like the Renaissance man and the the wrestler fighter. Yeah. I don't know, so like all in one. And years ago, there was a book by Stu Weber called Tender Warrior. Um, and that's what reminds me, like David was a tender warrior. And I think you're right. That's what drew people to David. He was strong yet compassionate. Um, he was a uh, hard on the outside and a soft candy shell, or soft candy, I don't know, chocolate in the middle. Mm-hmm. Like there's, there's something going on with David and his bravery and strength on the battlefield were tempered by his kindness and his mercies towards his enemies even. And even yeah. we see that, tr- that treatment of Saul um, when we heard, when David heard that the men of Gabish Gilead had buried Saul, he sent them this message. May the Lord be loyal to you in return and reward you with his unfailing love. And I too will reward you for what you have done. And that was um, 2 Samuel 2, 9. So we see just this tenderness and this loyalty that is beyond anything we've seen. Like it'd be mm-hmm. easy to be mad and angry, but He's rewarding those who honored Saul in his death. And David's life serves as a powerful example of a warrior who is not only physically strong, but also emotionally and spiritually sensitive, which that's a, that's an unusual mix. But God saw that. I mean, he had Samuel go and have Jesse dig out David from the sheep <laughs> pens or <laughs> sheep fields and God saw that, that that was going to be in David. And so it demonstrated true strength and courage that came from a deep love and reverence from God. And that's what drew people to him. That's, I love that word brotherhood, the brotherhood, the brotherhood came around him because they probably saw that he was that tender warrior. I think that's just really cool. There was a reason why these men, Mm -hmm. these powerful men would come around David. And I've heard about the mighty men since I was a little kid. You know, everybody talks, I shouldn't say everybody, but there's a lot of pastors, a Mm -hmm. lot of teachers that talk about David's mighty men and how he had this band of men around him. But until I read through the Bible chronologically this time, yes, until I read through it chronologically and didn't have it broken up, I don't think I paid attention. I knew that they were incredible men. But then reading about, you know, Benaiah, here's what he did. Here's what this guy did. Here's what this guy did. And putting it all together in this story, I was just like, wow, these were, these were just as incredible as David was. I mean, well, we know David's head and shoulders above them, but they were incredible men too. They just didn't get their story written. And, and right. so it made me want to go, hey, I, I want to read their story. I want to find out what was happening behind the scenes in their life. And, um, and it's, it's just cool that, that God just sort of, you know, sort of opens the door just so we could see certain cracks. And this was just a certain crack to see, like, just get a little bit of a picture of what was happening. And anyway, that was fun for me today. Yeah. And I think I didn't realize until reading through this time that they were gathering around him because we've, we've had chapters and chapters where these men are gathering um, when he was weak, when he was lost, mm-hmm. when he was running, when he was surrounded by his enemies. It's easy if, you know, once David is on the throne in over all of Judea, Judea and all of Israel and all over all of it, that it'd be easy for people to gather around like, hey, you're rich and powerful. Let me go hang out with you. But no, they were gathering with him when he was sent king this is before these are people that have gathered with him over time when he had nothing to offer them except we're on the run guys like we're on the run and we're fighting and they still gathered with him i think that's pretty cool it is cool Trisha, would you pray for us today pray that we find a band of friends Mm. like this i think that's that's what we need yeah Dear Heavenly Father, well, first of all, just thank you so much for um, this example of what a brotherhood can do Mm -hmm. and that David just had these mighty men that were just there supporting him and what encouragement that must have been for him. And I pray, Lord, that we will just find a brotherhood of brothers and sisters and friends that will gather. First of all, I thank you that 
the daily Bible podcast is building that, that I have my friendship Mm -hmm. with Michelle. And from Mm -hmm. that, we have these circles that go out of these more friends that are gathering around these powerful um, warriors, even if they might not know they are yet, Lord, that are, that are seeking you and seeking your word, Lord. I pray that friendships will continue to grow. I pray that Together, our understanding of the Bible will not only impact us, but those around us. And I pray that as we come together to learn more about you, to to read your word, to become stronger, Lord, that you will just show up within us in mighty ways. And I thank you for all these friends that are gathering. Mm. And uh, we just give ourselves to you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow, tomorrow's going to feel like you are reading less, but you're really not. (laughs) But it will feel like you're reading less because we are reading one passage straight through. So you're going to start in verse 6 of 2 Samuel 3, read the entire chapter, and then read 2 Samuel 4. (sighs) Okay, it's good stuff. It's easy peasy. Absolutely. Be encouraged. Okay, I just want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Trisha and myself and the Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com. They have other podcasts, great podcasts on prayer, on mommyhood, on anxiety, and other hot topics that you are dealing with today. Go find answers because they dig the answers out of the Bible. So go to Daily Bible Pod. Or, you can go to the daily Bible podcast.net also, but go to lifeaudio.com. <laughs> and we will see you here tomorrow. Bye bye. Learning to swim is fun. British Swim School is welcoming all new students to start their journey in the world of water. The team of highly trained experts at British Swim School will show your little fish all the ins and outs of life in the water, while also sharing valuable knowledge on water safety. So is it time for your kids to get their feet wet? Sign them up now at BritishSwimSchool.com. That's BritishSwimSchool.com. British Swim School. Make a splash.